Hello, everyone. My name is Jagan Guri Matla. So, uh, awesome presentations, but I think I have uh, something that could kind of put everything together that was discussed so far. Um, I manage a mobile app. By the way, I'm not with Federal Highways. I, I'm a consultant working for Federal Highways. I call myself a pseudo fed. <laughs> So we have a very unique program within Federal Highways. Uh, it's the Mobile Concrete Technology Center. It's been in business for at least 30 years. What we really do is, uh, oh, by the way, that's our lawyers. We are uh, supposed to put that in there. So we have this unique program that goes across the country demonstrating new technologies to agencies and industry partners. Uh, one of the cool things that we do is we take new technology and underutilized technology and demonstrate them in the field through a variety of ways. One of uh, the primary ways is through field visits. We actually go to an actual construction project and test concrete that's being produced using this new equipment. And during this process, what we end up doing is we get a chance to evaluate this new equipment using these new technologies and then get to see how these new technologies are actually working out. And in a lot of cases, we get a chance to work with the researchers that have put these technologies together to further refine those technologies. So um, what we've really done is uh, when Dr. Hu asked me to talk about our experiences with Tarantula Curve and the box test over the last few years, what I've done is I've looked at data from 2011 to 2019 uh, we had around 35 or so mixes, and of those, I took out research projects and uh, you know unique mixes and that kind of thing, and came up with 30 mainline paving mixes. Now, the tarantula curve and the box test was introduced to us around 2015 timeframe. So what I've done is I went back to some of our previous mixes from 2011 to 2015, as well as all the mixes that we've collected from 2015 and beyond, and plotted them on the, on the tarantula curve gradation curve. And then we also ran the box test in each and every project that we go to, if it's a uh, paving project. And we also took a bunch of field photos out in the field to see how it would correlate you know, with the box test and you know, how the field performance would actually correlate with the box test. So we had a couple of objectives. One is how does today's concrete that's being produced all over the nation reflect in our tarantula curve criteria. The second thing is, is there any correlation between tarantula, the box, and the field stuff? So um, for how many of you are familiar with the tarantula curve? Okay, not looks like 50-50. So the tarantula curve basically has three different criteria. Uh, Tyler has alluded to earlier on. The first one is, if you look at this particular graph on the uh, over there, on the x-axis, you have sieve sizes, okay, different aggregate sizes. On the y-axis, you have percent retained, amount of aggregate you have retained on each of those sieve sizes. So the first criterion is the two bands that you see. So each aggregate sieve size should be between those two bands. That's criterion number one. The second one is the blue oval that you see. That's the amount of aggregate that's retained from number 30 to number eight. If you add all of it together, that should be within the blue box. That's the, basically the coarse part of your fine aggregate. And then the third criterion is that rectangle, the brown rectangle, which is the fine part of your fine aggregate, which is basically all the aggregate retained from number 200 to number 30. If you combine it together, it should be between 24 to 35%. So that's your criteria. So what I've done is I've looked at all the uh, mixed design gradations that were submitted by the contractor to the agency and plotted them on the gradation curve, uh, on the tarantula curve. So the first thing we saw is if you look at the criterion number one, a lot of them, around nine or so of them did not meet the criteria. Okay, but a bunch of them did meet the existing criteria or, or the tarantula curve criteria. Now, those that did not meet, what you would notice is majority of the time, it's off by only one sieve size. It's either a half inch or a three eighth sieve size. Okay. Now, if you look at the other two criterion, the first one being the coarse part of the fine aggregate, which is the oval, the blue oval you see there, almost every mix out there met the criterion except one. Okay. Now, the third criterion, which in my opinion is probably the most important criterion, 
is the fine part of the fine aggregate, a bunch of these um, mixes did not meet this criteria. In fact, of the 30 mixes that we've had, 10 of them did not meet the criteria. Now you would see later on that this is a very important criterion when it comes to consolidation, finishability out in the field. Now again, Tyler had uh, showed you the box test, right? So it gives us information on consolidation, finishability on one end of the spectrum. And then on the other end, it'll also give us information on its lumping. Now we looked at consolidation issues and as Tyler had mentioned, you could rank them from one to four, one and two being the ideal situation. So what we've done is if you remember, I said from 2015 onwards, we started running the box test, right? So that's project number 16. That's the first project where we ran the box test. And then since 2015, we kept on running the box test every field project that we go to. There was one project in here. It was a bridge deck project. So I did not have the box test information there. So what you see here is box tests consolidation rating, okay, from each project that we went. So what you would notice is in majority, uh, um, I use 1.5 as our criterion to say whether the mix is workable or finishable or not. You could use two as a criterion. That's, that's my criterion just to get an idea of, you know, what would be a good, good number. So what I found is that majority of the cases, the box test indicated that from a um, uh, consolidation standpoint, it seemed okay again, but it's, but there's still many projects that actually fell out of the criteria. There are seven out of 19, which had greater than 1.5 uh, 1 as a criterion. So what I'm gonna show you now is I've highlighted three of the, those projects where I'm gonna show you what the box test results were versus what we saw out in the field. So the first thing, first one is uh, the worst one actually has around 3.2 or greater box test ranking. So if you look at the tarantula curve for this particular mix, what you would notice is it did not, you know, it barely, uh, it kind of crossed over the limit here a little bit, but that's not a big issue really because you could always have production variability. But if you look at the triangle here, right, that's the fine part of your fine aggregate. This should be in here. So instead of having a minimum of 24% person retained, in this case, it was 17%. So it's significantly low. So when we ran the box test, this is what we found out. Now, as you could see, when we ran the box test, we didn't take proper pictures just because it's a very first time. And honestly, when it was shown to us, I was like, really, this would work? But, you know, it really surprised us. So these are different samples that we took and look at the consolidation, right? Really bad. When we went out to the field, this is what we saw. Now, these tests that we, I'm showing you here, they're all run out in the field, different samples. And this is what we saw right behind the paper. And it's not an isolated instance where it happened just once. It kept on happening again, again, again. The contractor would take some pace of lying around and just freed it up. Right? I mean, to be honest, this is the first time I thought, hey, you know what? There's something to this test. Now, in this particular project, what's really interesting is there were four aggregates used. Two cores and two fines. But you know what it is? The fine aggregates were not fine enough. Even though they had two sets of fines, they were not fine enough. All they could have done is just replace one of the fine aggregate with you know, a, a, a even more finer aggregate and that would probably would have solved the problem. Okay, this is another project. Um, it did not meet the, uh, this criteria a little bit, uh, the, uh, the criteria number one, but more importantly, it did not meet the fine part of the fine aggregate criteria. So when we went to the field, this is what we saw. Would you like to have this on your project? And when we ran the box test, it did indicate the same thing. Now, what was happening here was, of course, a contractor wants to make it look nice and all that, right? So they were using so much water, you wouldn't believe. You would not believe. I mean, look at what's happening here. Right? Okay, this is another project. Uh, 
the criteria number three again was not met. Now I don't have field photos for this, uh, but then when we ran the box test, this is what we saw. So these are all some bad examples, right? All from a consolidation standpoint. So I also have a photo of, uh, or some example, an example from eight slum standpoint. So here is a project, project number 17, where the consolidation ranking was one, meaning it was perfect, right? It's as good as we want. However, when we look at criteria number one, it did not meet the criteria and it indicates in there that if you do not meet this criteria, you're gonna have segregation edge slumping. And we ran the box test and this is what we saw. And this is what we saw out of the field. Again, these are not isolated places where there was too much water in, on one particular day. This kept on happening continuously. All right. We talked about some bad examples. Let's look at some good examples, right? Now, if you were observant enough, I did not name any of those states there, nor the projects, right? But now I'm gonna name names. So this is from Iowa, perfect tarantula curve. Now, it, I don't think it was specified in their mixes. Uh, Iowa DOD did not have uh, a tarantula curve in their specs when we ran this, uh, when we were in their project. But look at this, the contractor figured it out. It was a perfect tarantula curve, uh, really good box test numbers. Look at this, can you get better than this? And then this is what you would see in the field. All right, Minnesota. Again, everything was good here. Box test, good. Now you're gonna see these bug holes here, right? What's really interesting is, when we out went into the field, you would see those bug holes. So that's one other thing that I've observed as a side note, the finish of the box test that you would see on the side is exactly what you would see right behind the paver before the finishes do their thing. So that's, that's really cool, isn't it? You, while you're actually designing your mix, you could see how your finish could potentially be out in the field. This is Arkansas. Uh, in this case, it did not mean the tarantula curve, uh, there was a greater number of fines in there. But when we ran the box test, again, a perfect box test. And then look at the finish here. All right, last example. So this is from Kansas. And this is what you see out in the field. Right? All right. So... One other thing that we have been doing off now the last, I would say, a couple of years or so before the uh, pandemic is we would be running the box test at different intervals of time so that you get an idea of how long you can work with the mix. How much time do you have to work with the mix? So in case if you're running a box test, I would suggest that you do this as well to get a little, bit more, little more information with respect to your, uh, you know, how much work or uh, time do you have to work with your mix? All right, some observations here. So first one would be today's mixes, today's concrete. From our experience, what we've seen is the criteria one is met most of the time, but in those cases where it's not met, it's usually one sieve size that's off. Criteria number two, which is a coarse part of your fine aggregate, I don't think it's something that we need to worry about a whole lot, but it's criterion three, which actually impacts your finishability and consolidation significantly. And in a lot of mixes that we have sampled, we see that that particular criterion is not met. Okay, so if you're designing a mix, please make sure that this particular criterion is indeed met. Otherwise, there's a good chance you could potentially see some issues. So some observations overall, the tarantula curve, box test, and the field observations correlate in almost all the cases. I say almost because tarantula is still a guide, right? You could still have you know, imagine you have two mixes, everything the same. You could have different aggregates and aggregates could have different specific gravities, different absorption, different angularity, right? All of those could also impact your workability. But the box test is a holy grail. Because if you run the box test, it's actually going to predict what could potentially happen behind the paper. Uh, and then finish, as I mentioned to you earlier, what you see from a finish standpoint of the box test, you would see exactly uh, behind the paper. And then I would definitely encourage you all to run the box test at different intervals of time 
to get better information. 